Omniverse. The Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program contains content that may not be suitable for all ages. Listener discretion is advised. Visit CthulhuMystery.com and head to Patreon.com slash Omniverse Media to join our community of fans and unlock further secrets. Do you hear that? In the cruel blackness of night, an unknowable evil from beyond time cries out. What dark deeds unfold on the streets of Arkham, and which unwitting souls, innocent or impure, will succumb to the maddening call, the call of Cthulhu. Top Hat Cigarettes brings you part eight of the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program, Tonight's strange story, Behold the Mother. At the crossroads of glitz and glamour, the only cigarette that satisfies playboys and stars alike is Top Hat Brand. In fact, actors, athletes, and models all share the same secret to staying young and vivacious. That's right, it's Top Hat Cigarettes. Our premium tobacco blend and unique cold ammonia process ensures that every puff is a pleasure, while simultaneously strengthening your lungs and fighting overindulgence. Just ask Olympic medal winner and world record holder, Karina Osipowicz. We swimmers have to keep in strict training. When I first started, a veteran swimmer advised me that smoking Top Hat would help strengthen my breathing. I tried them and found he was right. They're great, and they help to curb my insatiable sweet tooth. I doubt I could have made the gold without them. With Top Hat cigarettes, you can win the race and trim your waist. Whenever you're tempted, just reach for a Top Hat. The quest to solve one murder has ended in more death. While investigating the occultist squalor of the Hetfield estate, Father Grandfather stumbled upon a plot to conjure forth the Mother of Pus, a horrifying being beyond the realm of human comprehension. There, in that rotting house, he came face to face with a demon spawn and saved his housemates with his own brand of fiery justice. Baffled by the unexplainable horrors they'd borne witness to, Sam, Hank, Dolores, and Cyril returned to Arkham tasked with no less than trying to foil the end times. You guys drive back to Arkham, by then it's late as fuck. You guys don't really know what you're doing, so I'm guessing you guys are gonna kind of like read over everything in a panic, try to figure out what's happening. Our, our intrepid book dealer, Dolores, is gonna go back to the library. Sure, I'll cross-reference them. Okay. You read through some creepy damn books, cross-referencing it? An extract from De Vermes Mysteris. Watch not the stalkers, nor seek to know the spawn of the woods, for the tainted wellspring which gives them birth cares not for the intruder. Mark well what fate befell Orpheus when the daughters of Dionysus came upon him in the, deep in the woods. The black goat of the woods spawns and spawns again, but there shall come a time when her spawn shall come from a human womb Two who were one, and the child of those children shall be the mother of pus, and all the world shall tremble beneath her hooves, she who is the ender of ages. And the other one is an extract from the book of Abon. 
Time is not constant, nor is the future unchangeable. I have seen the coming of the Daemon Sultan's seed, and also the day uh, the oceans vomit forth the citadels of the Elder Ones. When the stars shift in their patterns and the dead live again, I have seen the Empire of Atlantia, not yet born, fall to the reign of years, and those kingdoms which wax and wane in her shadow. Serpent-haunted Styga, Aquilonia, Egypt, and Rome, Mark well what I have seen, for those are the signs of the last days, which foretell the return of those who dream and die, not the slouch of the beast, the rising of the corpse city, the hot kiss of the mother of pus, the return of the harbinger and maker, and end of all songs. So uh, after a day of reading all of these uh, terrible prophecies, yeah. now that you've seen signs that they may be true, you lose six points of sanity. Good thing I have like a thousand points of sanity. Dolores, you find some information about the children of Shubnagroth, known as the Dark Young of the Woods. Uh, apparently, uh, you have found something for calling them forth from the woods and binding them to your everlasting will. Oh, that sounds handy. Apparently, it requires the sacrifice of a rather large-sized animal. Hmm. Like deer. Would the animals in the yard have looked like big enough for it didn't that? didn't look like that, no. But there were plenty of them. Yeah. Now, from what you read, it needs to be more of a ritual sacrifice, not so much as an eating and killing, killing random things. Okay. You know what? We should summon one of these. When you bind something to you, you are likewise tied to it as well. Oh. It's like handcuffs. You cuff one person you, you're also cuffing yourself to that person. If we Maybe have, she already did it. There, was there a description of them? Well, what, what, oh, well, supposedly uh, they're kind of very vague in terms of the descriptions of them. Supposedly they are the trees that move and hunters of flesh. They grow forth from her teats to uh, feed upon the lesser races. Oh, lovely. And, well, uh, one thing you know, though, in everything you've read about this, if this had happened, this whole mother of pus thing, you'd probably know about it, because this is, if any of those prophecies are true, this is something that would be instantly recognizable. Yeah. We're talking like, you know, uh, mass suicides, cats and dogs living together, total anarchy. So, uh, you guys, uh, yeah, cross-referencing everything, I'm guessing you're going to spend some time, Cyril, and are you going to try to learn that song? Yeah, man, if I, if I feel like I can do something with it, it's, I mean, because it's, it's nagging me. It's like, it's like itching like cockroaches in my brain. Uh, I've, I've been trying to, you know, take a couple pills to, okay. make, it, to make it go away, but it's just, it's kind of... So you, you, spend, you spend all day with it. Shubnagra! Ah! Man! God damn. And you're noticing there's just something missing. Like, it feels like the universe is eating away at your brain. Roll a roll D10. That's one of those. You lose two, two points of sanity as you uh, try to wrap your mind around this impossible song. So, meanwhile, the rest of you guys have all spent pretty much all of the day trying to figure out what this means. And uh, what, what I am going to Father's room and looking for Bibles. Okay. <laughs> I am building an arsenal. Uh, you find a bullwhip. Okay, uh, don't you, want that. Uh, outside of that, you find a no, you. a pipe bomb. Taking it. Uh, and a garrote wire. Uh, it could be useful. Okay. And it looks like he's actually built a pre-made Molotov cocktail kit. Oh, I have a bottle of corn liquor. Like, well... <laughs> There's oh, actually, so. like, one of the Bibles, a big-ass heavy Bible, is cored out. Inside is what looks like probably a bottle of moonshine, and then a prayer rag, and a lighter. Okay. It's already ready already. Yeah, I'm going to duplicate that with my own bottle of liquor that I got. From okay. Now I have two Molotov cocktails, bomb, garrote, and uh, a bullwhip. It uh, sounds like a party. So, you guys spend the day preparing in your various ways. Uh, Hank Jr., are you up to anything? Are you just gonna clean your rifle I've, and well, like, I probably went contemplate up, your I, life choices? I pro yeah, I probably went up with um, with Sam to check for more arsenal stuff. Okay, but if you feel comfortable handling the bomb, sir, then uh, then I'll just take care of, of my own stuff. But I, I I can't even begin to read any of that that gobbledygook. So, are we all in agreement that 
horrible monster baby hatched out of Hannah. And it is some kind of prelude to her mom doing a ritual that's gonna bring the end of the world. Shabnigrath, yeah. Yeah. Right? As you read over the notes again, you, like, look, looking over it, suddenly something kind of clicks for you. You realize, uh, when you guys have spent, had a long day, and it's, it's, it's hard to tell, but when you notice she says something about going back to Arkham, that she was going to, uh, go somewhere amid all of the, uh, awful and decay, and two of you, uh, Hank and, uh, uh, Agent Spade, remember a place full of awful and decay. Well, you know, he's got a bunch of that boom boom juice, so let's go head that way. Yeah, it's it, by now it's late late at night on the 17th. Yeah, so we're uh, heading over there. Uh, time is a waste, and look, you guys got any guns for yeah. me? Oh, no. No, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. See you later. But I have pipe bombs and mouth of cocktails, grow, and a bullwhip. Because those are less dangerous than guns. I'm going to find a length of pipe. And I'm going to take the pipe bombs. Okay. And the bullwhip. Okay. And I guess we're going out to the dump. So you guys drive out there in uh, in Miss Delaney's delightful automobile. Uh, by the time you guys get out there, it's probably around uh, ten thirty or so, getting pretty late. You guys have kind of spent a lot of time trying to figure out what's happening before you could realize where and when. Uh, you think maybe there may have been something that may have hinted at this that. This is where she was found, like not too far from the dump, anyway. That's correct. So maybe she was on her way to the dump. The only place that thing would have gone to hide would have been inside that pit. We walked the the uh, yeah, the yeah. dump and didn't find any any signs of anything. So, well, as you guys make your way out to the dump, I'm guessing you guys, are you guys just gonna drive the car straight out there, or we're gonna get fairly close. And then you're gonna walk there, close. sneaky? No, 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 no. That's no point. We okay. heard the car coming. Okay, so you drive the car out, hooting and hollering, pull up in front of the dump. There's the again, there's the the area that is fenced off. To the side of that is the groundskeeper's cottage and then a little south of that is this big nasty pit for those of you here were here before it stinks worse than usual okay first thing i want to do i'm gonna light my pipe okay and i'm gonna throw the pipe into the pit okay i mean you're pretty far away it's it's a big pit so you hurl it out there and uh it makes a little splash and then there's a much 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 bigger splash is that a pipe or a pipe bomb that was a pipe I Smoking wanted to see pipe. if the if the uh, if there was gasoline, oil, some things I got sitting gotcha. in that water. If it was, boosh. If not, then I didn't waste a pipe bomb or a Molotov cocktail <laughs> or Model A. Why not? Why not put a Shinola in that pit? Buy a bigger splash. I mean, bigger splash. Yeah. Like a dolphin, but there's no way a dolphin could be in that pool. Ew. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so we have a couple of options. Trash dolphin. Yeah. How, how long uh, is that whip and how deep is that pit? Uh, the pit's big. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's hundreds of uh, feet across. Like, I mean, it's, you know, probably about two football fields long. I have Shit. an excellent idea. There's a farmer up the road with a telephone, and we call the police and say that we found another dead body inside of this thing, and uh, we think the killer is hiding in here, and they come here with a bunch of guns. We could just blow it up, too. I don't well, know if the pipe bomb is going to be big enough to blow that two pit up. Two football fields, yeah. Everybody roll a listen check. I failed that with 100. Awesome. I don't know what... Uh, my listen is at 25%. Yep. What my is that, what does my that listen mean? is uh, 74, and okay. I rolled an 89. Okay, so you fail? I so failed. You failed? You made it, though, with a 3 out yeah. of 25? Okay. Yeah. So they're all busy arguing, and you've been kind of quiet generally in the whole thing. Mm-hmm. As you know, doing your farmhand thing, and you're kind of standing back, and you hear noise coming from down near the pit, down near the water line. You can't tell exactly where it is because there's a lot of echo bouncing around, but it actually reminds you a lot of hearing uh, Cyril sing that terrible song. But it's not really, it's not as sing songy, it's more of a, kind of a, a faint chant. You can barely make it out. Okay, I'd be like, hush, 
Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm going to tell him. I'm going to try and tell him as, as, as quickly and as quietly as possible. Like, you all got to shut up. I hear something. Listen, listen. I'm going to try and get them to listen. Uh, yeah, you guys all silence, and you guys can faintly hear it as well. Something down something down by that pit. It's a sounds like a, a female voice. I'm going to look through the scope of my rifle and start scanning and try and see what I can see. Yeah, black I think you want to do it. I, well, most most times I'd oblige to do it, but I, I mean, I, I, I think we should just blow it up. I mean, the, 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 ain't, ain't no good come from those words. I, 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 it's like ants in my brain. All right, throw a pipe bomb down there. Let's should I? Happens. Well, should I? Can I? Can I try? If I'm looking with my with my rifle, can mm-hmm. I try a spot hidden to see if I see where it's? Yeah, go ahead. I mean, it's dark out though, so yeah. I guess yeah, it's tough. All I right. mean, you, you'd probably want to get closer, but you know, if if uh, chances yeah. are with your arguing, whoever's down there probably heard you because you didn't hear the chanting start up until the, until the rest of the group is arguing. Right. I, I, I okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna come up all all smiling and waving. Hey, Hillary, praise Shabnagura! Yeah. A- as you say that, you hear a counterpoint of a wailed Shabnagura. And as that happens, there is a terrible peal of lightning across the sky. Lightning usually isn't green. Pretty quickly, you guys hear, uh, see strange clouds kind of forming and racing, covering the moon over the area. And a, a chill wind blows. And all of a sudden, coming out of the wind from the west of you guys is a, uh, uh, a sickening reek of just rot and body odor. And... Uh, us. And all of a sudden, kind of growing out of almost like nothing, you just see uh, you know papers and things flying from that into the dump. And then growing from nowhere is a massive gaseous form that congeals into a, a rotting, bulbous entity of some kind covered in mouths and hooves and claws. How big is it? As this giant drooling shape, it, it looks like something out of a nightmare. And uh, it only grows larger spewing slime out of different orifices. Is this, is this coming out of the sky or coming out of the pit? Uh, neither. It's kind of coming from the west, kind of towards the pit, almost out of nowhere. As this thing congeals into existence, everybody roll sanity. This one's fun. 29. Is that a make? That is a make. You uh, lose d10 sanity. Holy shit. Uh, this thing, a... by the way, is approximately the size of a skyscraper. Fun. Uh, I, I rolled a 40 out of 46. Oh, so you made it. So, D10. How'd you do, Bookworm? I got 58 out of 68. Oh, you made it. So, D10. Yep. I made it, so I guess D10. Yep. Uh, what would have happened if we had failed? D100. Oh, shit. Uh, I, I got a... A zero is 10, right? Oh, uh, yes, that is 10. So, you are temporarily insane. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he begins uh, 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 chanting in elation, and uh, Agent Spade reaches out and no, 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 that was not a character. It was just a joke. <laughs> okay, so did anybody else lose five hit or five sanity or more? I lost seven. I, I lost, lost five. five exactly. Oh, so everybody is temporarily insane in some fashion. So let's go around and explain what's going through your mind right now, Hank Jr. Uh. Since it's just like the size of a skyscraper and everything, yeah, I, I, I just, I guess I, I guess I would either freak out and just like fall to the ground and just be staring in horror, or I would probably just pass out. Okay, it, it's nap time for the farm boy. Mm-hmm. Cyril, you've been reading about this. That's the black goat. That is Shubnagroth herself. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. You're destined for a duet with her. <laughs> you suddenly realize. That's what this is about. Speaking of which, all of you guys have lost five points or more. You guys automatically gain five Cthulhu Mythos from uh, the knowledge that only insanity can reveal. So by gaining, we subtract from 99? Yeah. Okay, so. I mean, that's usually not relevant for your max. So, yeah, uh, this is who you were going to be singing with. Uh, I don't know if you want to embrace her. I've, I've been a caged bird pent up with my, all, all my talents wasted on no good uh, band members who just didn't understand my art and here is the black goat queen of pus and of the entire world and I'm gonna sing I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna 
I'm gonna take all my pills and I'm gonna sing. Yeah, I like shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I guess saying then, uh, Agent Spade, you're going into a homicidal mania. No, Free. it's not homicidal. That's very cold calculating. Well, you're not calculating you knew, at this but you point. Got, you lost your your, your uh, sanity as well. Uh, uh, you, desperate. <laughs> So, desperate, you're just gonna run at it and fire? No, no, I'm gonna fire at him. <laughs> okay. Shout the girl up! Yeah, yeah, okay, so, yeah! Uh, see, that, that would be why. Okay, so you're gonna just shoot him relentlessly and then and then eat his body. What? You're insane! Come on, man. Give eat me some insanity. Body. What are you doing to him that's insane? Oh. Well, and I gotta grow up. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna try to... I don't want him to sing. Okay. I mean, oh, you're, you're holding the gun out. That, yeah. You're, yeah. Okay, then, okay. Yeah, I'll shoot him. Foaming at the mouth from pills, yeah. mm. pipe bomb as my <laughs> microphone. <laughs> okay, next is, uh, so how are you doing, uh, Miss Delaney? I will rip out a chunk of my hair and shove it in my ear so that I cannot hear that singing anymore. Oh, that's good. It, suddenly things are a little quieter. You're feeling better, safer. But you, you think maybe the one thing that would be better w than uh, hair would be if blood were in your ears. For some reason, that makes sense. I can make blood happen in my ears. Yeah, yeah. That that, that feels right. That <laughs> Pulls feels out right. Little baby Derringer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as, again, as uh, Shubnagroth appeared, uh, or just before she appeared, rather, uh, Hillary Hatfield popped up from behind her hiding place to exalt her uh, dark god. What are you guys up to? Uh, uh, singing away? Uh, si singing, singing my oh, heart is out. Is she singing too? Well, she has just kind of fi finished her adulation. Looks uh. like she's starting to sing. What type of song are you doing? Are you singing to uh, to stop this or to make it happen? Uh, I assume uh, uh, Hillary. Hillary is singing to make it happen. You're a better singer than her. You can I, tell. I am. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing the best version of those crazy words that have been burning a hole in the back of my skull, and to get them out, and to make the burning stop. <laughs> well, the the version that she's singing is harder to do. That's better technically, but the one you've been practicing is Flare. is all about making everything better, making everything chill. But it doesn't quite have the artistic flair. She she lacks the the artistry. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Right. Right. Are you going to sing her version of the song, or are you going to sing the so version you've been practicing? Sing the version in my heart. Okay. So you sing away. Roll your sing. You got a 92. Uh, my singing is 88. Okay. So you're kind of catching on the words. You're having a little bit of performance anxiety. And then uh, all of a sudden, uh, a gun barrel is placed against your head. Ace and spade. What do I got to roll? Just roll uh, double skill real quick, because we want to see if you impale. And like you know, shoot him in the uh, brainstem as opposed to maybe in the jaw. Shove the gun Good. through his head and then shoot. <laughs> so yeah, roll double your pistol skill. So 80, so 160. Yeah. Okay, what'd you get? 43. Okay, 32. So no, it's not good. Okay. So uh, you you shoot him, but you're having trouble holding it straight because everything you believed is a lie, mm -hmm. and you graze the side of his head for, what, three damage? Yeah. So yeah, you've got a, a bloody head wound, but you're able to keep singing. I don't even feel it. I took so many pills. <laughs> so, Miss Delaney, what are you up to? I have my derringer in my ears because I'm going to blow out the sound. Okay. Are you making that happen? or are you just I'm going to make that happen. <laughs> okay. Because so, why not? Oh, uh, you don't need to roll. You know where to put it. So yeah. you put it right <laughs> through your ear, and the singing goes away, and you feel better. Oh, <laughs> That's lovely. And now, Hank, you're having a terrible dream. Nope. Uh, your skin is erupting in sores, and uh, you're drowning in your own pus. Uh, meanwhile, Cyril, you're singing your heart out again. Make another sing roll. Uh, 63 out of 88. So this entire time, Shubnagroth, the Black Goat of the Woods, this giant entity, has been singing in, t in harmony with Miss Hetfield. And all of a sudden, you kind of hit your stride, and you notice slightly that all of a sudden, all of that singing changes, and it's now singing in harmony with you. Yes! Yes! Agent Spade. All right, I have control of my actions now, or? No, you're still insane. I'm still insane. Yeah, I, what kind uh, of gun do you have? Got 38? Yeah. Okay, take two shots. Remember, double skill again, so you, 32 or better is an impale. Okay, oh, all right, so I'm, well, then I, I did not impale. Yeah, still. Uh, three points. I did not impale either. Eight points. So eight, nine, ten, eleven damage more to Cyril, uh, who is shot repeatedly in the head, and I'm guessing is probably uh, deep into debt at this point. What is, what is that? Uh, Off your hit uh, points. Hit points. Yes, uh, I'm at nine, so that was that was uh, yeah. 
not not so good now. Uh, so Cyril sings away, and with his uh, make a luck roll, thirty-four okay. out of fifty-five. So with a uh, uh, with, with your last dying breath, the pitch squeals even higher in in Shubnagrath singing, and then all of a sudden uh, everything goes black for you. Is for some reason you're unable to think anymore because your brain is no longer intact. Now uh, the last person conscious. Uh, <laughs> Agent Spade, he's dead, but he's still responsible for this. So you continue to pump your bullets into him. As you do, you hear a, a howling of, No! My child! As uh, Miss Hetfield screams madly, all of a sudden uh, you turn your head and you see rising from the uh, putrid pit of water uh, in the middle of the dump uh, a massive tentacled beast. Uh, roll sanity. This is not gonna go well. Six. Okay, so so you made it, so that's not terrible. You lose d6 sanity. What? At this point, uh, I mean, you're already pretty insane, but that so that doesn't really bother you all much. And this giant creature that has just risen up from the water, the, this mass of flailing tentacles and mouths, grows larger and larger and larger until it bursts in a puddle of reeking putrescence. Uh, Miss Hetfield howls in anguish. The Shubnagroth singing cuts away, and, and and the black goat slowly begins to evaporate into nothingness. Uh, you begin to come to your senses uh, as this happens, and you look around. Two of your uh, uh, cohort are dead, and an additional one seems to be unconscious on the ground. Your gun is empty. Miss Hetfield is charging up the dump towards you, howling in anger. I pick up his rifle. Okay. Take, taking up the rifle, taking aim at her? No, I'm just I'm keeping it ready though. I'm waiting for her. To, I'm not I, very good with a rifle, so I'm gonna okay. wait till she gets as close as possible. You you pick up that rifle and and as she's running at you, she stops and then dives behind a uh, Model T, an old rusted out Model T. Oh, that's perfect. And then uh, begins to howl and chant. Yeah, Shabnigroth, you trust in Zephlas. Molotov cocktail, lighter. Make a throw skill. Oh, I, I just walk up and toss it right up to the car. Oh, you you walk I, I just it? walk up to it, okay. toss it right at the car. And she's not. She doesn't have a weapon, okay. right? It's like you no. as yeah. you as you walk down towards her. Uh, 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 she gets up from behind the car and goes, "Ia, Sabnagrathia," and points at you. And uh, go ahead and hurl that Molotov cocktail. You're right next to her, so double skill. Ninety-five. Okay. <laughs> So you hurl the Molotov cocktail, and she moves her head a little and it splashes behind her. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, your skin is itching terribly, mm-hmm. and you look down, and you've got all these red welts on you that are growing larger and larger. It looks like they're beginning to burst open and bl- ooze blood and pus. What are you up to now? I'm going to take this bitch down with me. I'm just going to grab her, tackle her, and right into the fire. Okay, okay. So you, you grab her and then ta- go to gr- tackle her back. Uh, make a grapple roll. Uh, 25 is the base. Uh, I'm going to give you double, though, because she is old and is kind of concentrated on... 32. Okay, so you grab her and you tackle her backwards. Uh, All of a sudden, uh, as you grab her and tackle her into the fire, your your wounds are just streaming pus, and it's so disgusting. You find yourself just vomiting all over her face as she screams obscenities at you. And then, uh, pretty quickly, the two of you land in the flashed-out pool of uh, flaming high-proof alcohol, and both of you guys uh, go up in flames. Uh, her just burning to death, you burning as all of your organs liquefy and pour out of your skin. <laughs> Hank Jr., mm. you awake. Cyril's lying next to you, dead of multiple gunshot wounds. Oh shit. <laughs> That's all I can think. It's like, giant monster, terrible nightmare, wake up, Friend is dead. It's like, Dolores Delaney is dead as well. She's got one wound to the head and is, is gripping a danger I, in her I, hand. I try to reach for my rifle, but it's not there. Yep. <laughs> uh, roll sanity. Everyone everyone you know in town is dead. 34 out of 74. Okay, you take it pretty well, despite, <laughs> uh, you know, other things. Huh. Uh, eventually, you look around and you see uh, uh, there's a, a, a burning uh, a little inferno over near the pit. And looking over... There are two bodies in it, roasting away. Embraced. 
Yeah. And I'm gonna at that point I'm gonna take my wood axe, which has been tied to me, like on this, like yeah, yeah, and around I'm, your back. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get that, and I guess I do. Do I see my rifle? Do I see? Yeah, you see it over by the uh, burning body. Is it like in the fire? Or? No, it's to the. It's all right. Hank's yeah, gonna. Hank's that. gonna very carefully be looking at everything. Everything is suspect. Everything is 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 completely crazy. But he's gonna carefully approach, keeping the wood axe ready, and try and grab that rifle eyes constantly in fear looking around. Uh, you grab it and from the burning clothes, you recognize one of the bodies in the fire as uh, Agent Sam Spade. And I just go, ah, oh, Sam, what'd you do? Tell my story, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and I check the chamber and I'm ready. It hasn't been fired much, uh, so you look around, everything's eerily quiet. You <laughs> win. Do I? I don't know. It's like, I, I didn't see anything happen. Literally, world is ending, nightmare, and now I'm here. I don't know. I don't know if if I'm the only person on Earth left alive. I don't know anything. Uh, I, what's what's the pool? What's the pool doing? The it stinks terribly. Death and feces. It's absolutely awful. Do um. It's every terrible smell combined. Where do I do I see the pipe bomb? Looking around, going back up near the uh, other bodies of your friends, you see it lying mm -hmm. to the side of Cyril. Okay. I'm Looks gonna... like he was gripping it in one hand. Okay, I'm gonna get that for okay. sure. I'm gonna. To, I'm, the lighter matches, whatever. Ready to, to get this. Just so I'm. Re I just want to be ready for anything. Cause yeah. Because I, yeah. I literally don't know anything that's. Yeah. Happened. You, you grab out a lighter. Okay, so you've got so the lighter got in one hand, pipe bomb in the other. All right. I remember that Sam threw his pipe in. So I'm gonna try and get like any piece of junk and throw it in there just to see if, any, if there's any reaction, see what happens. Doesn't seem to be. You throw it in and there's a nice placid splash. Looking around, as you, as you wander around looking at things a little more closely, it's dark, trying to figure out what's going on. You see there are corpses of animals all around this place. Like they looks like looks like they've all just died around the water's edge. Y'all put me in an awkward situation. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Like, we saved the no, world. No, 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 no. It's true. It's a, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to. I'm afraid to just walk away if there's something still here. Dude, but just hold the pipe bomb out and just say "secrets out." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically, looking so, over. Right, so what? One thing we're gonna do, just to, just to be safe, because I don't know. Well, you, you, I mean, looking at looking at uh, Spade's body again, mm -hmm. you, you notice the body that he's embraced with looks like it was probably used to be a woman. Right. And we and I knew I heard a woman saying the, the the chant and everything else. So what I'm gonna do just to be safe is I'm just gonna light the pipe bomb, toss it in the uh, toss it in the pool of, of 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 all that pus and craziness, and run for cover. Okay. And, and see what happens. You hurl it in there, and uh, I mean it's a big pool, so it's not a problem. Well, we'll make you roll. See if. <laughs> See if this unreliable preacher's pipe bomb doesn't just go off and kill you. So this is just a, this is just to see if it even just goes. Yeah, so see if you get a hundred. The son of a bitch is gonna. Get this. I'm gonna roll a hundred and it's gonna all be that preacher's fault. Or, or the, the, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, you're fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, you you hurl that pipe bomb into the water and it goes off and there's a nice splash. A couple of uh, dead animal bodies are hurled out of the water, but that's okay. it. Then I'm gonna walk out of the dump. To that farmer's place, knock on his door, and get on the phone and uh, call the authorities. Just oh, throw his door open, make the call. No, I mean, well, I'm gonna knock and see uh, if he answers. And if he doesn't answer, then I'm going in anyway. So either way. Like. Uh, you knock. He answers the door, sobbing. Uh, as like, oh my dog's God. I don't know what happened to it. You okay, man? Can I help you? I say, I ain't got time to explain. <laughs> But but some 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 awfuls happened and I need to use your phone. Please step aside and I go in. And he, I make you look very purposeful and he's not willing to to challenge you. And uh, I mean I, I'm gonna whoever picks up the whoever picks it up I'm just gonna tell them every just tell them they need to get down here and explain and, and I'll explain it all when they get here. I just tell them that there's been three pe there's four people dead and it's all by the dump and okay. there's been shots fired and just I tell them I don't tell them anything crazy I tell okay. them the, you know, yeah well you, you get them down there. so cops show up cops take you away uh, uh, and uh, put you in jail because uh, you all of your known associates are dead of gunshot wounds and immolation so it looks pretty bad also uh, apparently they find out that one of your associates also stole a uh, mail truck 
and then appeared to have killed himself in some sort of explosion mm -hmm. in in a in a town not too far away. I'll tell I'll tell him I'll tell him straight up well, everything that happened, <laughs> at least everything that I saw. Well, you're pretty sure you've managed to stop the spawn as you sit in jail, so you feel nice and contented. Now, do I have they, a court date? Well, they are trying you with the murder of four people. Why? Five. Why? Why am I being charged with murder? Uh, because all of these people were killed, and you were carrying a rifle. I suppose, but I think it's pretty obvious that one has a, uh, a rifle full of bullets that hasn't been fired, and it's a different caliber weapon. Even a farmhand knows that. Plus, I I, I believe that I, I got have... some good credit in good standing <laughs> with the pe with the people of Arkham. Make a credit roll, rating roll. Ah, uh, piss. <laughs> <laughs> that's the highest roll I've done tonight, basically. No, it's no good. That's okay. not. That's out of out of seventy. Don't worry, son. I'm I may be a simple country lawyer, <laughs> but I can get you off. Listen, we're just gonna say you did it, and that you're sorry. It's gonna be fine. And this guy, this guy, he knows what he's talking about. He's a lawyer, so you trust him. And I, mean, uh, I got no way to argue. <laughs> and that's when you go to the penitentiary. But it's okay, because on the on the inside, you know, you know that you stopped the end yeah, of the world. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm, as long as I know, it's like, hey, look, I know shit. Eventually, they release you on a mistrial, but it takes about a year. Oh, I ain't so bad. <laughs> being, being in prison is pretty bad. <laughs> really it's, optimistic. I mean, well, I ain't dead in a, in a dump. <laughs> it's like it's. <laughs> Dateline, Arkham, Massachusetts, November 14, 1928. Hank O'Brien Jr., the 21-year-old charged in the bizarre multiple homicide that took place at the Arkham City dump this past April, is a free man. Four were found dead in what would be described as a nightmare scene of bloodshed and conflagration. Three of the deceased were associates of O'Brien, including a former federal agent and a local business owner. O'Brien's testimony claimed they had been asked by an Arkham police detective to undertake a private investigation into a grisly murder that took place just days earlier near to this very crime scene. This claim has been refuted by the Arkham City Police Department. However, in his plea, for instance, character witnesses said the young man had good standing in the community and couldn't possibly have been a killer. After several months in the Essex County Penitentiary, a judge has declared a mistrial due to the highly unusual nature of the proceedings. Does a murderer walk among us, or has an innocent man been set free? Either way, the brutal nature of what transpired that night will surely weigh heavily on O'Brien for the rest of his days. And there you have it, friends. The bittersweet conclusion of The Black Birth, our debut series of The Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program. It's been quite a ride. If you need some space to decompress, we certainly understand. So why not collect your thoughts with our episode-by-episode -episode podcast series, Cthulhu Cthomentary, available now at patreon.com slash omniversemedia. It was interesting seeing everybody come to terms with being insane all at the same time <laughs> and who was down with it and who was not like, yeah. It, yeah. like what players were like oh <laughs> yeah let's get nuts and like other players <laughs> were like no i am a serious role player and uh we are not going to go insane thank you very much i mean you like, can, you know you can I mean? tell <laughs> rule is a game master because he's trying to be a control freak about what does or doesn't happen to him right if you enjoyed this sinister story, you're in luck. Our grim and whimsical sojourns into the unknown don't end here. More mystery programs await. We'll see you in Series 2, a wildly different tale called The Terrible Secret of Lot X. You see, The Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program is an anthology show. Each series, we're joined by a new cast and embark 
on decidedly different tales of darkness and delight, all entangled with an intermingling mythos. And you never know when two stories' paths might cross. In Series 2, you'll meet wealthy occultist Estelle Thorpe, and her latest auction win proves to be a Pandora's box of horror. To solve the paranormal mystery she's uncovered, she assembles an unlikely crew of curiosity seekers. Moses, the mountain man-turned-renowned novelist, Cherry, a floozy who's more than she seems, Oswald, a hobo king, Anjana, Estelle's cunning assistant, and Kenneth, a notorious gambler. Together, they encounter monsters above and below, dark secrets, and terrifying pacts with forces not of this world. Find this adventure and more at CthulhuMystery.com and on your favorite podcast players. Now, for this evening's listening pleasure, WIS is enthused to present the singular musical talent of Appalachian man, Ramblin' Randolph Carter. As it's been told to me, this mountain man claims to have traveled into another realm in his dreams, and he's seen beautiful and horrible things. Folks thought him mad, raving about these dream quests of his, but when they heard his songs, well, <laughs> madman or not, the haunting beauty of his music is undeniable. Our producer got him in the studio with some accompaniment, and uh, here we are. Listening to this song, I can't help but wonder, is this man truly mad? Perhaps he's a, a dope fiend, or has he borne witness to things that we can scarcely imagine? Things that we forget as soon as our consciousness returns upon waking. Perhaps you've met him in your own nightly journeys. Or perhaps you'll recognize the strange creatures he sings of. This is The Carpet Crawlers, performed by Ramblin' Randolph Carter. There is lamb's wool under my naked feet The wool is soft and warm Gives off some kind of heat A salamander scurries Into flame to be destroyed Imaginary creatures Are trapped in birth on celluloid The fleas cling to the golden fleece Hoping they'll find peace Each thought and gesture Are caught in celluloid oh, There's no hiding in my memory There's no room to avoid the crawlers cover the floor in the red ochre corridor for my second side of people leave more lifeblood than before they're moving in time to a heavy
Thanks for listening to the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. And be sure to subscribe to our series via your favorite podcast player to get all the latest episodes. Episode 8, Behold the Mother, was written and performed by Luke Stram, Cat Blackard, Doug Banks, Kay Brandon Gerson, and Rule Nudson, and is based on the Call of Cthulhu module, Behold the Mother, from Dead Reckonings, published by Chaosium Incorporated. The series is edited and produced by Colin Peterson and Cat Blackard, and the original score is composed and performed by Ryan McQuinn and Mike McQuinn of Neon Dolphin. Home for all your custom music needs and more, neondolphinmusic.com. For full episode credits, transcripts, as well as character sheets and other supplemental material, visit CthulhuMystery.com. This program is made possible by the support of listeners like you. Join us at Patreon.com slash Omniverse Media. All characters appearing are fictitious, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This series is recorded and produced in Central Florida and Nashville, Tennessee, on lands ruthlessly taken from their indigenous people, the Tamuqua and Seminole, and Yuchi, Shawnee, and Cherokee, respectively. To learn more about the First Nations of the lands where you live, visit native-land.ca. This has been the Call of Cthulhu Mystery Program. Good night. Omniverse.